Will our children and teachers please come forward? Well, yeah. Oh, here we go. Friends, friends have, are amassing. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. All right. You keep an eye on them, okay? All right. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We ask, O oh Lord, uh, that, um, that when you do come down, uh, low on these clouds in glory, uh, you might keep these ruffians in line. And we ask, O oh Lord, all this in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Love you all. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I have this recurring nightmare that keeps coming to me, and, um, and it's really from my childhood. And uh, when I grew up, I was, uh, I was in a small uh, suburb of Chicago, and we were on the Northwest Line, and, um, and, and most of the trains stopped at Barrington, but there were, the, the line went another 30 miles northwest, right? It went, it went like to Harvard, and not like Harvard the University, but Harvard, the farming town northwest of Chicago, right? And so, um, so anyway, I, I would, uh, I'd have this dream that I was coming back on the last train from Chicago to Barrington, but I would fall asleep, right? Now, you have to understand this. The metro trains are, are these double-decker trains, right? And, and the windows are, are heavily tinted green, right? And, and if you're on a train at night, you, it's really hard to see through the windows. You, do, you don't even know what stop you're on. And, and the, um, the, the conductor sounds like this. Right. So next stop, blah, 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 right? And so, you know, I'm sleeping, and, I, and, 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 and in this dream, I, I'm just tr I'm trying to stay awake, right? I'm trying to stay awake, I'm trying to stay awake, and I'm afraid that if I fall asleep, I'll wind up in Harvard, in, in a car overnight, uh, and, and there'll be no way back to my house, right? And I'll have to wait sometime to the next morning when the first train pulls out of Harvard, right? And, and this fear is like overwhelming because I can't see out the windows, I can't hear the conductor, and I'm worried that, that the conductor's going to say, well, I told you to stay awake, but you fell asleep, and so you're here in Harvard. I can't help you. Right, okay. And so I, this, 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 this kind of dream kind of comes to me whenever I'm anxious or worried about missing what I'm supposed to stay awake for, right? And, um, and, and, the, and the, the pity is I love trains. I love riding on trains. And, and no one knows this more than Barry Heinzen Connect. Because he and I have train stories, right? And so, you know, we, we, I love the trains, but then they become like this point of kind of anxiety. Oh, my goodness. What if I fall asleep and I have to stay the whole night in a train yard, right? And so, okay. So here's the thing. There are many things, there are many things to get anxious and worried about. There are many things in this world that will overwhelm you, right? And Jesus knows this. Now, here's the thing. Our story today in the gospel reading is the same exact place that we were at last week in the gospel of Matthew. So what happens in our, in our church year is that year A ends with Jesus and the disciples up on the Mount of Olives. And they are overlooking Jerusalem, right? And in the next few days, they'll have, they'll have the Last Supper, and they'll have Jesus' arrest, and his trial, and his condemnation, and his death and resurrection. And so they're overlooking this, and Jesus knows that after this this teaching with the disciples, they're going to deal with some really heavy stuff, right? And what Jesus also knows is that the, the, is that the, um, the disciples are going to have a really hard time staying awake. That is, to be ready to receive what it is that Jesus is going to be teaching them and what Jesus is going to be experiencing, so we know what Peter and the other disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, they're actually going to fall asleep. Literally, they're going to fall asleep. 
And Jesus is going to say, you couldn't even stay awake for one hour with me? Now, our reading begins and you think, oh, here's this great apocalyptic vision of the end of the world. And Jesus wants us to focus on the end of the world. But nothing could be further from the truth because actually at the beginning of chapter 13 in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus actually is saying, look, all this stuff is going to pass away. Don't worry about the things of this world, right? You're going to see amazing things happen. You're going to see crazy things happen. Don't worry about it. You know why you shouldn't worry about it? Because neither the angels nor me know the day or the hour. Only the Father does, which is it's above your pay grade. You don't know it, don't worry about it, right? If it's not on your desk and you got a stamp done on it, if it's not on your desk, don't worry about it. And part of what Jesus is saying is these visions... These visions, yes, they might be true, and that might be at the end of the world, but we've got really important stuff that is about to happen, and I need you focused right here and right now. I need you focused on what is about to happen. If you're asleep and you're not with me during this important time, we've got a problem. And part of what Jesus is saying is all of those visions... All of those great visions, which you neither know the hour nor the day, they all end like this. God is faithful. And God's glory and grace and faithfulness will reign supreme, so you don't need to worry about it. You can't fix it. You can't do anything about it. You don't know when it's going to happen. But all of those visions end with, with God's faithfulness. In fact, In the first vision, one of the first things he says is, guess what? All of this crazy stuff's going to happen, but God is going to send his angels to collect all of his people. So don't worry about it. God's got it under under control. You get an angel, you get an angel, you get an angel, right? Uh, I might get like a broken-winged angel, right? But but we might stop at a bar on the way back to God. But, But we all get angels, right? Okay. So, uh, so having said that, what he's saying to them is, if you focus on that thing that you can't do anything about and that I'm telling you ends up with God's faithfulness and love for you, then you're going to miss the thing that I need you to be focused on so that you can actually do the work that I'm calling you to do, right? If you miss the cross, you're not going to be much good to me as a disciple, I need you to be focused here and now. Now, Jesus is telling this to disciples that he knows are going to struggle. He knows they're going to fall asleep. He knows they're going to be less than ideal disciples. And that's good, because that means Mumsy and I can also be disciples, right? Right, exactly. And that means you can be a disciple, and that means even Verno can be a disciple, right? Right, exactly. And he's crossing himself, oh, no, I don't know about that, right? <laughs> right. And the point is, Jesus doesn't need perfect disciples. He needs disciples that are ready and willing to receive the grace that God is offering right here and right now. And, and this is the really cool thing, to tell stories about how your life has been transformed by grace and love and forgiveness and healing. The new year of, of, our, of our worship year begins like this. God is faithful. Crazy stuff will happen, stuff that you couldn't control and that you couldn't explain, but God is faithful. And all this long ride of this upcoming year, there will be crazy things that happen in your life and in this church, but never forget that God is faithful. Now, in the second reading from 1 Corinthians, Paul says to them, hey, look. He says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's writing to a community that is in conflict, and he says, guess what? Here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the fact that you are graced, that you are blessed, that you are called, and that God loves you, 
and that God is sharing his grace and love and peace with you. And then at the end, at the beginning of the last sentence of that reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, God is faithful. God is faithful. Don't forget that when you are arguing with each other and you are fighting with one another and the world seems crazy and everything seems at odds with one another, don't forget that God is faithful and that God called you here to partake in this faithfulness and in this grace and in this love and in this forgiveness. And he begins this letter by reminding them that everything flows out of God's faithfulness. That's where the church year begins. It doesn't begin with we're crazy. It doesn't begin with I don't know. It doesn't begin with the world's about to uh, you know, fall off its axis or everything is going crazy. It begins with God is And what Paul reminds them is that God sent Jesus to you because God is faithful and loves you and desires you to be with him. The good news isn't that you're perfect or that you got all the answers or that your life is is all tucked up nice and neat. It's that God is faithful and regardless of how perfect you are, you've been given the great invitation of grace and love and peace and forgiveness and healing. And that's the story that Jesus is reminding his disciples always. (coughs) Don't worry. Get on the train. Get on the train and it'll take you where you need to go. Now, the good news is that our conductor is God, and he doesn't have a broken microphone that goes blah, 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 blah. It goes, I love you. I want you. I am faithful, and I call you to be on this train. That's the good news. Now, my angel might have a broken wing, And I know Vern's angels got a broken hip, right? And I know some other angels might not be taking people to the best places, like Ben, right? (laughs) But ultimately, all those angels are taking us to the faithfulness of God.